Okay, so you're Fran Holt. My name's Rick. Mm -hmm. I'm with Williams County EMS, and we're talking today about Addison's disease. And you were diagnosed with Addison's disease 36 years ago, is that correct? Correct. correct. Tell us about it. Uh, well, when I was diagnosed, uh, I had been sick probably three years before that. It, it takes a lot of effort for doctors to get it diagnosed. It's a rare disease. Mm -hmm. um, I started out with um, um, digestive issues. Uh, I kind of alternated between constipation, diarrhea, and vomiting. Vomiting more in the in the uh, later stages. Okay. Um, I did manage to continue working full time, but I was so tired. Uh, I would get home, get on the couch, lay there all night, go to bed, have a hard time getting up. Um, towards the end, I was getting so weak that I would, when I'd have to lay on the couch, and of course because the uh, function of of uh, Addison's is you lose weight, uh, go to the bathroom a lot, and uh, so on, on my way to the bathroom, which was 30, 40 feet away, I'd have to lay down on the living room floor because I was just not able to make it all the way, and I get very dizzy. The funny thing is, the sicker I got, the better tan I got, the more, more I freckled, and of course, being Irish, I thought it was just being Irish. Sure. But I would scrub behind my knee so hard trying to get it clean, I couldn't because I would I would hyperpigmentate, and that's apparently the clue that actually tells doctors what's going on. Is a hyperpigmentation? Right. Okay. Um, I've I've seen other other women that have had Addison's that came out with tans that looked like they were African American, even though they were really not, <laughs> and just because it, they were so sick. Um, it's kind of neat the body tries to help out, and so the sure. pituitary kicks out as much melanin as it can. It doesn't do any good, but anyway. Um, so this went on for um, the last six months in particular. I lost about 20% of my weight. I was under 100 pounds by the time I went into emergency. Um, and uh, uh, when I did go into emergency, uh, I'd been sick for about a week. I was uh, uh, in bed vomiting and and it actually was two or three days since I ha ha had to go to the bathroom because I was so depleted. Mm -hmm. And so when my husband finally figured out that uh, I was vomiting water, and so he called and took me in, and they brought me in, took me from the car to uh, to the ER in a uh, uh, wheelchair, asked me to get from the wheelchair up to the uh, ER bed, I looked at it and I said, that's too far, and I passed out. Um, later, the ER uh, director did tell my, my then husband that uh, I would have died an hour later if he hadn't brought me in. So it was pretty rough. Um, I don't think that's all that atypical. That you talked about when they started <clears throat> going through the diagnosis process in the ER is they checked your pituitary gland, mm -hmm. okay? And one of the reasons they did that is they basically diagnosed you with, which is what was referred to as primary adrenal insufficiency, right. which is directly the adrenal glands are not secreting what they need to secrete, leading to all the issues. Now, the secondary adrenal insufficiency doesn't have anything to do with the adrenal glands. Right. They're actually functioning fine, but the pituitary gland is not secreting ACTH, which stimulates the adrenal glands. To exactly. Secret. So that's absolutely what how they how they figured out that it was Addison's, right? Um, and and I should also point out that I have also met other Addisonians who who have Addison's because they had surgical removal of the adrenal glands, um, and it can also happen because of just the, the glands get infected. So it may not just be the atrophy itself of the adrenal glands. So when you went to the ER. Mm -hmm. Based on my research and what we know about Addison's disease, you're in what they call Addisonian crisis at that Definitely. point. Now, from the time from the ER admit, how long did it take them to actually give you an official diagnosis of Addison's disease? I think it was two or three days. I was in I was in ICU, and uh, they ran all kinds of tests, and I don't remember exactly what it was. They had to determine if it was my pituitary or the adrenals that were um, not functioning. And 
um, but I don't remember the specific protocol of what they did. Um, did they go any other directions? Was, like, did they point, lean towards like cancer or any other disease processes? Not that I'm aware of at that point. Now, prior to the diagnosis, I'd had other sure. other things come up, um, but at, by that point, I think I think it was lending itself more that they they figured it out. You know, the doctor didn't explain his his thought process to me. Just that, you know, he did okay. do those tests. One of the causes of Addison's disease is an autoimmune disorder of some mm -hmm, type or definitely. another. Have they diagnosed you with anything like mm -hmm. that? I okay. also have Hashimoto's, which is thyroid. I may or may not have Meniere's, which affects my hearing. Um, there's lots of autoimmune diseases in my family, so um, that's very definitely okay. a situation. And that's, that's another one of those diagnostic tips that's... Oh, very yes. Us. Yes. You know, and and that's something when when various family members have ailments, I always tell them tell them the family has autoimmune issues, um, because then you can at least go down the list and say this could or could not be the absolutely the one. Yeah, um, I think autoimmune diseases are, are probably among the harder ones to come up with unless you realize it's a family issue. Second, you mentioned you went to a support group. Yes. Uh, I've actually been in three of them. Um, I was diagnosed in Michigan, mm -hmm. then I lived in, in Chicago area, and now there is a, a new support group here in, in Austin. And uh, so it's just four or five months old. How so many people are in your group? This group, I'm going to say there's probably 14, 16, I'm not sure. And the reason I ask that is my research said that one out of 100,000 people have Addison's disease. Okay. Um, that seems to be... You know, it's, pretty, it's pretty low. I've heard maybe 10,000 in the country. So, you know, not, not doing the math. I mean, it's, it's a rare disease. Okay. What kind of limitations does this disease process place on your daily life, if any at all, at this point? Okay. Um, well, first of all, we, we Addisonians can live normal lives with normal longevity. So... Uh, when people are diagnosed, that's always re refreshing to know that. Mm -hmm. um, we do have to take precautions. Absolutely. Um, but for the most part, the limitations I've had in my life have been fatigue. When I was in my working years, I probably missed a day every month uh, just because I just could not get out of bed, and I would sleep the entire day. And what medications do you take specifically for Addison's? Okay, for Addison's, I take two. They're both steroids, um, but of course I only take them in replacement doses so mm -hmm. that they don't have the usual side effects. Uh, the one is, is uh, hydrocortisone, and the other one is Floronef. Uh, the hydrocortisone uh, mobilizes the nutrients. Uh, it uh, is used for, to stimulate the liver to create the blood, uh, to raise the blood sugar, and uh, it helps with managing inflammation and uh, it does somewhat help with water levels in the, in the body. The Floronef um, doesn't do as many things, but it's very important because it, it controls the uh, blood pressure and blood volume by regulating the salt and water levels in the body. I get the impression you've never had any additional attacks per se versus the one that originally took you to the ER or the Correct. diagnosis. I've been very fortunate that way. I know that's not true for everybody. Um, I, I do have symptoms. I do have uh, bad times. I have had to go to ER since then. But um, usually what happens is the fatigue just becomes more than fatigue. It is sheer exhaustion. I mean, unable to, to hardly move. And that's partly because of the muscle weakness. Uh, I just become so weak um, that just getting out of a chair is, is hard. Confused isn't quite the right word, but it's, uh, I don't make good decisions. Uh, I, I know there have been times when I've been lying in bed and my medicine is right next to me, and I say, I should take my medicines. Cause when I wake up in the morning is when I take it. And I should take it, and I say, I'm too tired. I'll do it when I wake up. You know, not, not good thinking there, but... You know, and that's happened more than once. So I, th I think the the mind kind of plays tricks on me at that point. Like I said, the muscle weakness, cramps, 
Uh, charting horses are really awful. Oh, the blood pressure really drops. So you stand up, become very dizzy, uh, lightheaded. Uh, like I said, I lost consciousness when I was actually in my adrenal crisis. A lot of the signs and symptoms you're describing right now, the loss of blood pressure, low mm -hmm. blood pressure, the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, the uh, passing out, those are extremely common mm -hmm. signs and symptoms for a multitude of things that we run across in just day-to-day -day operations mm -hmm. in EMS. So one of the reasons we're having this is to, you know, get people to start thinking more and more, you know, don't just automatically assume hey, they passed out because they stood up too fast, or hey, it's just a stomach bug, or hey, they've just got low blood sugar and they need to eat a right. sandwich. There could be a lot more going on. Uh, Addison's is, as I said, very difficult to, to diagnose. And from what I've heard from people in support groups, getting a proper diagnosis is very difficult. Um, How often do you have issues with your condition? I'm kind of probably retracing steps, okay. but it sounds like you've had maybe... Five, I think you said earlier. Well, as far as having to go to the ER, mm -hmm. um, I've gone probably, as near as I could figure, about five times since I was diagnosed. So I've been very fortunate. Some people have done that in the first year or two after the diagnosis. Um, sometimes it's been, one time it was because I donated blood. Uh, that was about a year or so ago. Um, I don't know if I had an infection at the time or not, but after I donated blood, I was I was pretty weak and pretty out of it for a good week, and then I went to the doctor, and she said, don't ever do that again. Um, but um, I've had infections several times. Um, we mentioned so what are the underlying causes for this, so let me review, okay. make sure I got them all right. You said stress, stress could bring it on. Definitely. Uh, lack of a good sleep cycle, mm -hmm. things of that nature. We'll just hit stress again because life right. is stressful like that. Uh, and then, I guess, normal everyday disease processes can what we call exacerbate right. your condition. Like you mentioned, so I'm going to run down the list of signs okay. and symptoms for Addison's disease. And in the three years that you started having issues before you were diagnosed, if I hit one that you had, let okay. me know. Okay. Because to me, this is important. So muscle weakness and fatigue. I Towards think. the end. Okay. Weight loss and decreased appetite. Definitely. Okay. Darkening of your skin, hyperpigmentation. Mm -hmm. All right. Low blood pressure, even fainting. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, salt craving. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Really? I ate a jar of pickles every night. Every night I would get a big jar of claws and pickles, no ad intended, and just eat those because I just craved it like crazy. The other funny thing that I craved was licorice because... It, it turns out licorice has a chemical composition that's very similar to the cortisone. And so every lunchtime I would go and get a pound of licorice and eat that at, at a, pound. a pound. <laughs> yeah. And I lost weight. <laughs> that's outstanding. Okay, so low blood sugar, mm -hmm. pound of licorice aside, mm -hmm. nausea, diarrhea, vomiting. Oh, yeah. Uh, muscle or joint pains? Um... I got cramps, not really, I, I wasn't aware of any joint issues, uh, but I, oh, I got Charlie horses, oh, so badly. Yeah. So any of these conditions, and these are, like we talked about earlier before the camera started rolling, when I said talk about diagnostic tools, you know, it's important for people to know in my line of work, you know, have you been under a lot of stress? Have you not been getting, and these seem extremely benign, but when you add it up all together, we kind of got a direction to go, so excellent. Uh, one of the things I found interesting in my research, we talked about it outside mm -hmm. for a minute, was John F. Kennedy was yes. diagnosed with Addison's disease. And we kind of made the joke that I guess we all thought he had a really good tan. Turns out he did not. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that's an interesting point, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and you bring up a point there about um, you can live a really good life. Um, and be, you know, I actually, I was diagnosed with irritable bowel disease before uh, before. I got the official diagnosis. The thing that really seems most common, and even after the diagnosis, is people think you're just depressed. It's just depression. That's why you're kind of lethargic and, and uh, you know, don't seem motivated or anything. And laymen and, and professionals alike 
missed that one. Were you ever put on antidepressants before they officially diagnosed you? Yeah, the doctor thought I was, it was just depression. You know, and I don't know if that's because so many of us are women. It, it does seem to hit women more than, more than men, not exclusively. But, um, you know, so we tend to get that, that diagnosis a little more readily anyway. You know, it's interesting because, you know, and you probably see the smoke starting to turn out of my ears because my Aggie brain's actually starting to kick into gear. But, you know, I wonder, we talked earlier, there's one in 100,000 people statistically that have been mm-hmm. diagnosed with Addison's disease. You ever wonder how many we've missed? Oh, I wonder how many have died because of it. Um, you know, you know I, I remember being very angry that it took me that close to death before I could be diagnosed. And of course, now I realize, you know, it is a hard thing to diagnose. You know, I can't blame the doctors for not getting it, uh, you know, because unless they see the sodium levels and the potassium levels, they've really got no reason to suspect it. But, but if we travel or if we're just at home, mm-hmm. we have the soggy cortex on hand, um, and it is something I think your folks should do when, when they get to the house and find out that it is Addison's, find out whether or not they have already administered it. Um, and if they have not, then do it then before they get to the hospital because that can save some time. Okay, so Solucortev, is that an emergency type it's of an, injection? It's an okay. emergency inje- injection, right. Um, I, I was going to bring it today, but I didn't want to leave it in the car while we would go shopping afterwards. Yeah, yeah Solucortev, it's, it's basically a, a, a high-strength cortisone. Uh, is, steroid. It's an injection? It's an injection. Uh, it's a, a, a vial that you have to mix. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you press a little plunger and, and mix the powder and the, and the liquid and use a syringe. goes in the outer thigh. Um, and uh, we, we take our advocates, such as my husband, and, and uh, have them trained how to do it because, like I said, I don't think too clearly at that point. So if I'm at that point, he needs to do it for me. I have never actually had it done uh, because I've always made sure I got to the ER while I was still in better shape. But if I wait too long, you know, if, like if we're traveling, I may be at a point where I'm far away from the hospital. Sure. And that's when I'd really want to have it. It sounds like if a patient's in true Addisonian crisis, most of what we're going to do is going to be stopgap measures. I mean, we can replace fluid mm-hmm. loss. We can replace blood sugar. Well, and of course, as soon as we get to the ER, the first thing they're going to do is hook up an IV with, with saline solution and, and with uh, hydrocortisone in it, um, which, you know, until then, you at least use the, the solucortev to do that. Okay. So. Now, well, it's an interesting point because we do carry solumedrol, which is a corticosteroid. And it's... And it's the other option. One of the reasons we're having this conversation is we're trying to go out and find the people we don't know about. You know, we may not be able to fix you on the spot, but the more information we can give mm-hmm. to the patient and the ED staff and everything else helps long-term fix right. us. Right, right. Glad to have you guys around. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Again for your time. Thank you. Sure.